So the other day at OpenAI's uh, big developer conference, they showed uh, a new feature called GPTs. So basically GPTs are a custom version of ChatGPT that combines your instructions and information that you give it and tailors it to uh, perform different things that you need it to do to maybe enhance your blogging workflow, for example. So eventually there's going to be a GPT marketplace, much like, like the app marketplace that we have now for iOS and Android. But this is going to be uh, within OpenAI and you can use other people's GPTs in your own work. So for, for example, let's go over to ChatGPT and see what I've been doing recently with them. I created a content gap analyzer, analyze blog posts for content gaps and provide detailed reports on the differences between the two. I did something called simplify my text. So I simplify text to match different grade levels. And then one that I just finished up this morning, Mike's super cool blog post generator, interactive AI for a dynamic section-based blog writing. So, you know, the, the big deal is some people go, well, aren't these just prompts? Why can't I just do this with ChatGPT and my regular prompts? And there's nothing to stop you from doing that. But you know what it was like, right? You had to have a Google Doc and you had to have all your prompts there and you had to try to remember, you know, how did you use those prompts the last time around? This is a little different. So for example, I'm not gonna go through this whole blog post scenario, but let's say we use my super cool blog post generator. So basically what it does is it helps me uh, craft a blog post based on a series of questions that I developed. So let's go ahead and take a look at my blog post generator. So what's the main keyword for my blog post? So it, it says, hey, tell me what, what is the keyword for or topic for your blog post? So I want to write about why do mountain bike riders wear padded shorts? So I put that in. Now it asks me, let's think about a title. Do you have a specific title in mind for your blog post or would you like some suggestions based on your chosen keyword? So I'm gonna say, show me some options. And it goes through, gives me a variety of different titles. Uh, let's go ahead and go with number one. So I say use number one. So then it's going to ask me about how long does my blog post need to be? I'll say 2,500 words. Then it asks me about tone of voice and it gives me some different options. So in this case, I'm gonna choose number two. And it's ask, gonna ask me about point of view. So you can see what it does is I've created this GPT to take me through these series of questions. And when I get through answering the questions, then it generates the blog post for me section by section. As it, as it shows me each section, it gives me the opportunity to clarify anything that I want to clarify in that section, like, you know, add a table, add lists. Um, it asks me, what grade level do I want this blog post written for, and so on. So it's just a really nice way of creating a blog post uh, without having to remember all these different prompts. 
and I'm writing it section by section. So it's been pretty good at getting me very close to the word count that I want to use. So let's try something different. Let's try my simplify my text. Let's take a look at a blog post I recently wrote. Uh, it's in Hemingway. You can see it's at grade 13. 97 of 211 sentences are very hard to read. They're marked red. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So here's what I'm going to have my GPT rewrite for me. Advertisers may be more interested in reaching specific demographics and are willing to pay higher prices for videos and attract those audiences. Creators should analyze their audience demographics and create content that appeals to advertisers targeting those demographics to maximize their CPM rates. That is a mouthful and hard to read. So we'll copy it. We'll go over to simplify my text. And I want to rewrite it from a grade 13 to, to make it simpler, rewrite it for a 10th grader. So it asks me, I put it in, then it goes through and rewrites it. So that big mouthful, they change to advertisers like to focus on certain groups of people. And they're ready to pay more for videos that these groups watch. If you make videos, you should check out who's watching them. Then try to make videos that these advertisers will like. This way you earn more money from your videos. Much easier to understand, much easier to scan through. Now, I realize this is an earth shattering, right? Simplify my text. But uh, certain blog posts you want to write for certain grade levels. Some AI writers don't really allow you to adjust for that. So um, this is a really nice and easy tool for me to go through and make these changes. And I can just reuse it over and over again. So let's, let's say um, I'm not going to go into my, I have another one I created called Content Gap, and Gap Analyzer. And basically it analyzes two different blog posts and uh, shows me where I have shortcomings in my post and what data I need to add based on the other post that I'm comparing it to. I have a very specific use case why I created this, and I have a video coming up on it. So I don't want to go too deep into this right now. But let's say you want to build your own GPT. What is it like? Now, you have to have ChatGPT Plus to do this. So we go to Create a GPT, and basically you've got this builder, this helper, that will help you create this. So for example, let's go ahead and create a GPT that will suggest different AI images to add to a blog post. So I'm going to ask it to do this. I need you to analyze my blog post and suggest at least five AI images to use in the post. I want to see the prompt you plan to use for each AI image. I want the opportunity to edit these prompts. Then I want you to create the images in a 16 by 9, which is a landscape aspect ratio. Can you do this? So we'll send the builder a message and see what it says. Great. Let's start by giving this GPT a name. Let's call it, how about visualize it? Do you like this name? I like it. So off we go. It's generating a profile pic right now that's going to be used for this particular GPT. That's about as good as anything. I like it too, so I'm going to say, yes, use it. So now it's asking me about blog posts, what their specific topic would be, what their focus is. Aaron message stream. Let's regenerate. Let's hope it works. So it, it wanted me to describe the type of blog post, right? So I wrote the type of blog posts could be for any niche. Use your analysis of the blog post to derive the images 
image types and content. So now when it comes to creating images, how would you like visualize it to balance creativity with factual accuracy or realism of the images? Should it lean more toward imaginative visuals or realistic depictions? Use a combination of both. So it's asking me now about how do I want the interaction style to be? So when this GPT is asking me questions about visualize it, uh, do I want it to be straightforward and concise or more descriptive and elaborate in its responses? So I'm going to say straightforward and, con and concise. So as I su suspected, it's ready for me to go ahead and try it out. So you get to try out your GPT before you save it or do anything like that. Now, I usually go up to configure, and in this case, it has conversation starters, right? Well, I only want one conversation starter. Enter the blog post. That images will be derived for. So we're going to go with that. Now we're going to go over to visualize it over here in sort of this playground area. And let me do something really quick. Let me grab this blog post so we have one ready to go. Visualize it. Sure, please provide the blog post or describe its content theme and key elements you'd like the images to complement. This will help me create an appropriate, engaging Dolly prompt to generate images that enhance your blog post. So then we just simply copy the blog post in. So I don't know if it's going to create five images or not. We'll see. I asked it in, in my original instructions to create at least five images. It's a great image. So I'm going to say this. I need four more images based on the content of this blog post. So here it's telling me uh, in the preview there what it's going to create the images about. And now it's creating the images. And so it's going to create the images one by one. And so it's starting that first image concept about the Google Keyword Planner tool. So it's a pretty cool image. Uh, now let's create the second image. So it's just going on and creating the second image uh, based on, uh, let's see, what does it say? It's focused on the geographic variation in the YouTube CB CPM rates. This is going to be interesting to see what it comes up with for that. These are pretty complex prompts, uh, and it's not an easy article to create images for. Now, there's a lot wrong with this image, but there's a lot right with it. I think, uh, and when I say a lot right, I think it's perfectly fine for a blog post. And then this one depicts a YouTube content creator engaging with a diverse audience. That's great. And then here's the fourth image. Uh, it's the concept of building a passionate YouTube community. Yeah, I really like that. That's a great image. So this is how quickly you can build a GPT. And in fact, I'm going to save this because I like it and I'm going to use it. This simplifies my life quite a bit. So now I've got, you know, four easy to use tools that I can use to complement my blog post writing. And so, um, just get in and try uh, creating your own GPTs. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they're not going to always work out the first time. Uh, the blog post writing one, my Mike's super cool blog post generator, that took quite a while for me to get it exactly the way that I wanted it. The, the more complex the GPT, uh, the more work it's going to take to get it to output exactly what you want. But when you do, uh, it's really nice. They're just all saved here, ready to go anytime you need to use them. 
And I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to share these with the world yet. They're available to me only at this point. But I wanted to show you how quickly and easily it was. you could build your own GPTs. I mean, these are, these are ones that work for me. But uh, actually, you know, what you want to do with your GPTs could be completely different. So I hope you found this useful. If you um, did, please like the video, subscribe. Uh, and if, if you do build your own GPT, uh, please comment and tell me how it went for you. I'd be interested to know. Uh, don't forget to uh, visit my website, mikeshuey.com. Uh, you can go there. You can sign up for my free monthly newsletter. Uh, that would be great. Uh, so until next time, take care.